over and over for five centuries. We mistranslated the verse and it turns the Holy Spirit into a sinner. And that's okay so long as we don't disagree with dear old Dr. So-and-so from the past. So this is another flavor of that kind of uh, fitting in. Now we're all to blame for that too. Because we, the hoi polloi, the rabin, the masses, get very ticked off if we find out our leaders are wrong. In our minds, they're little gods and they're not allowed to make a mistake. The bigger you are, the bigger the mistakes you're going to make. So that's another pressure against the teachers to not teach what they may even know is wrong. I mean, I don't see how anybody couldn't know that James 4 5 is mistranslated. My pastor taught it was mistranslated, but people like my pastor are very few. They're there, but they're very few. And they pay a really heavy price for going against their peers. So what you're seeing in Christianity basically is 99.9% .9 of the teachers go along with the past. All of the translations of Bible go along with the past. They don't really translate much anew. They don't really look at the Bible. They look at the past translations and, ooh, if we're too different from the King James, that's bad because the King James is respected. Same thing here. Now, I said earlier that there's one guy upon whom all this false dating of Bible is based. The guy's name is Bishop Usher, U-S-S-H-E-R. You can look him up on the internet. I, I'm talking from memory now. My memory could be faulty. I want to say he was around 580. Might have been earlier, might have been later, but it was real early in time. He was Catholic. Um, and, you know, you can, res you know, enjoy and respect and even laud him for trying to date when all this happened. I mean, it was a big topic in Catholicism. You've got Aquinas' treatise on the six days. That's something else you can look up on the internet. Um, you had earlier, or later, um, Augustine trying to figure out how evil got into the world. And he wrote his treatise on free will as a result of that. That was really what he was trying to get at. And then some stupid guys named the Pelagians, you know, misused what he wrote. And the Calvinists have been arguing against those people ever since. Um, you have this issue of a guy in the past who did a calculation misreading Genesis 5 as if Genesis 5.5 5 is talking about Adam's lifetime. And he's looking at that to think, okay, the first day would be the first day of Adam's creation. But that's not what it says. All right, the, the words are very precise in Genesis 5. The days that a person lived from A point to B point. Now, in the people after Adam, it's using the same language, and it is true that that's their birth and death. But we know it wasn't Adam's birth. Okay? Because in Genesis 3:15 through 22, God makes the judgment that now, as a result of Adam sinning, his days are going to be numbered. So the fall is the beginning of the dating in Genesis 5:5, not before. Okay, well maybe Bishop Usher was tired that day. Maybe he later changed his mind, and we don't have on record him changing his mind. But we do have this calculation that he did. You can hardly blame Bishop Usher for the fact that we have deified his calculation, especially when we have the Bible text ourselves. And you especially can't blame him, since for the last 150 years, we've had the best Bible texts have been uncovered. That began in the 1850s, and of course, Satan and Company fought against us then by, you know coming up with a fake Bible, which was the Joseph Smith thing with the plates, and then coming up with evolution, which is a, a, a counter-explanation to Genesis. All coming up at the same time, the Tregelles, T-R-E-G-E-L-L-E-S, and Tischendorf were uncovering the best manuscripts that we had. Tregelles was Codex Vaticanus. Well, Tregelles did his own manuscript. 
from memory of Codex Vaticanus, and the, the Pope finally agreed to publish Codex Vaticanus in 1889. And then Tischendorf found a palimpsest at uh, St. Catherine's Monastery, and I think he also got from a monk in, uh, who had hidden it a whole copy of the Bible that the monk had hidden. The palimpsest was being used to light fires. They were using scripture to, rot, to light fires. And that got sold to the Tsar, and then when the Bolsheviks took over, they sold it to the British Museum in 1917. That was Codex Sinaiticus. So these were two of our best manuscripts, and they weren't, they weren't really uncovered and made publicly available until the last half of the 1800s forward. So really, before then, you can cut the teachers some slack, because it was really hard to get access to scripture. But from 1850 forward, you can't. And you certainly can't cut them slack today. You saw in less than, what, five minutes? I was able to show Tohu Wabohu is talking about the restoration of the earth in the other Bible verses, particularly whole chapters of Isaiah 53, 50, sorry, 45 and Jeremiah 4. And my pastor's been teaching that very thing for 53 years, and he's not the only one. So for pastors to parade now against evolution and say, oh, the earth was created in six days. I'm a young earther. Yeah, using Bishop Usher's calculation, which calculated that the earth is 6,000 years old in our terms today. He's saying that 4,000 4, B.C. was the initial creation of the earth. Because he miscalculated, because he didn't read Genesis 3:15 through 22. And instead of us revisiting the Bible to see what it says, we're using what Bishop Usher says. Are we liars against God or what? Do we hate God or what? We're going to use a calculation made by a guy, in, you know, a million years, a uh, thousand years ago, over the Word of God that we now have freely available on computer. When it took what five minutes to prove it to you, it wasn't hard, was it? So as far as you know, I mean, what this reveals is that we're all hypocrites. We say, oh, I love Jesus, rah, rah, rah. What liars we are. If you love the Lord, you love his word. If you love his word, you look at his word, not at some calculation some guy did. And then bang the drum on that against the evolutionists. Hmm? Of course, the evolutionists don't read the Bible either, but they don't claim to love the Lord. They don't claim to love the Bible. We do. So, you know what? Maxima mea culpa. We got our pants down. It's about time we corrected ourselves. And as I go through the other uh, verses in Genesis, and I'm going to go through other verses in the Bible related, you're going to see how it's even more embarrassing than we knew. And along the way, you're also going to see how the evolutionists don't read the Bible right either. But they got an excuse in a way. And they don't claim to be pro God. We do. And we're proven liars end of episode 5 now let's see if I can shut this thing off and I'm sorry that it had to be so you know bad